Hello, I'm Javis Lewis and in this episode I'm going to show you how we can grow some grass with Blender using the particle emitter and some rudimentary kind of basic 3D building skills. In the previous video I've already shown you how to extrude this logo here and that's now on our plane that looks very exciting and this is still the rendered viewport and my idea is to have this logo sprout out in a field of grass like I've shown you in the first video of this mini series. So let's see how we can do that. First of all, I'm going to go back to the solid viewport, the, the solid shading option here so that we can that we can see this. And really what we need for grass to grow and be replicated in vast numbers is we need at least a single stalk, if not two or perhaps three. So let's look at how we can do that. Blender has these options called layers. So it's a little bit like in Photoshop that a scene can be made up of different layers that can be displayed at the same time or separately. So I'm gonna go and switch this viewport to the layer two. So that means I have nothing here, but I'm still in the same scene. So I still have access to all my objects, but none of them are currently showing. And that's kind of what I want. So let me start with a cylinder. This is it. I don't really need 32 sides. Perhaps eight is already kind of overkill. And uh, I don't really technically need anything on the top or the bottom, but I think I'm just gonna leave that anyway. So this is my cylinder. And to make sure it's aligned with the plane, I'm gonna move that up a little bit. So I'm gonna go and say G, Z, one. And the reason that, that the, why this makes sense is because a Blender object is usually two units high, one above and one below when it is created. So by moving it up one unit, I'm going to move it exactly to the ground plane. Much like we did with the Dash Studio logo, you can see that my pivot point is now exactly in the center of the object. And that's not really great for what I want. I'd like that to be at the bottom center of the object. And uh, that's exactly where my 3D cursor happens to be. So that's kind of cool. If you have accidentally messed that up and you've clicked somewhere in the scene and the 3D cursor is not in the center of the scene, uh, then you can always bring it back with Shift S and say, cursor to center and that'll put it right into the center and also it happens so that wherever the cursor is that's where your objects are created in blender so let's just leave that there and make sure that we switch the origin of our object to where the 3d cursor is so that's over here we saw we saw that in the previous video set origin to 3d cursor and there we go so this is our cylinder and you can argue this is kind of the bottom of our stalk of grass. It's just a little bit, you know, large perhaps. So let's scale it down with the S key and just make it much, much smaller. The actual scale isn't that important right now because we can always do that overall. Just for now, I want to get the rough shape of a stalk of grass. So that's there. With the tab key, I can go into edit mode, click A to deselect everything and make sure we select faces. That's this little icon, select the top face and uh, perhaps click the R key to make a tiny bit of rotation there and then click the E key and extrude our grass stalk. Grass stalks, they also get a little bit smaller towards the top down there. So we just also scale this in a little bit and rotate this around perhaps like so and extrude again and scale down a little bit and extrude again. Whoops, actually, let's not do that. Let's also rotate this and also let's go and rotate the viewport a little bit so we can go and rotate this. Whoop, not that much, perhaps just a little bit. It's just, you know, it's all about subtlety, I guess, when you're building grass. So let's extrude that to about here, scale this in, uh, turn around that, tumble around a little bit more and go rotate this around here and then extrude again and scale it down and perhaps we're going to create one last extrusion uh, just to rotate around here and extrude here and then we go s0 because that kind of creates the tip of that yeah perhaps this is a little bit a little bit crude here at the top maybe i'm just going to go and uh, shift this up a tiny bit maybe uh, yeah there this is my first grass stalk and because I liked it so much, I'm going to tap out of edit mode. Maybe I'm going to go shift it out of the way and create another one. A little bit of variation there. So let's do this again. The same thing. We're going to go and hit enter GZ1 
to put it here uh, then we can put the origin to the 3d cursor and then we're going to scale this thing down perhaps make this a little bit smaller than the last one so that we have one thick one one thin one oops and uh, go into edit mode make sure we select the top face here uh, rotate around and extrude to our heart's content by spinning the viewport before i rotate i assure that the grass dog rotates in three dimensions rather than only in the two dimensions that i'm looking at it that's why i'm doing that so rotate the viewport and the grass dog uh, by itself and you know just make sure you go and scale it in a little bit every time just so that it looks almost like grass i mean it really this is just you know by the time we're done with it it's, it's not going to be um that big a deal anyway but you know what i mean there and then we go s0 and then that's kind of a, the tip there so that's two grass dogs done not bad eh the trick now is to duplicate those two, rotate them around their own z-axis, and then put in a little bit of a size variation in there. Let me show you how that works. So uh, we've got these two guys here. I'm going to create a duplicate of this guy with Shift D, and I'm going to click, just left click with the mouse, and that creates a duplicate in the same place as our previous grass dog. Now to move this guy around on the same plane, all I need to do is press G shift z to exclude the z axis from the position and all i can now move it in is the x y plane which is exactly what i want so perhaps i'm going to move this guy here then i'm going to press s and scale this guy down a bit and rotate him around the z axis to maybe here perfect now i'm going to do that with the other guy so click select this guy shift d to duplicate it lock it into place then go and hit g shift z put this guy here and rotate him around the z-axis by maybe something like that perfect this is also going to be scaled down and now i've got four of these guys and they're all kind of randomly rotated and that's perfect so look what i can do now with the shift key in place i can now select multiple objects with shift d i can duplicate all of those so again click the left mouse button hit g shift z and that will move all of those into a different place perhaps here and now this is kind of cool because now we can press s and scale these guys down to make them a bit smaller and then of course press r z and have these guys rotate now that looks more like a bushel of grass that we would find somewhere doesn't it just so there we go this i think this is a good starting point for our replication adventure because I'm first I'm going to bring this guy a little bit closer to the bushel group here. There, that's perfect. Ish. I mean, perfect. You know, it's, it's good, good enough for what we're going to do here. So notice that we still see these little facets. Uh, again, you can click the smooth button and then you can see the difference between uh, what is smooth shaded and what is flat shaded this is flat shaded the default and this is smooth shaded again you can just press a and then uh, make sure everything is selected and have everything be smooth i suppose for grass that's a good idea now notice that in the scene selection dialog we now have several things that are just called cylinder so basically all of these so with on this on this layer everything is now selected and they're all just cylinders i can join these up into one single object currently they are individual objects so if i select one of these guys and go into edit mode then i can only edit this one guy but i'd rather take care of this as one single object and i can do that by clicking a to select everything here and then i can click Control j to join all these things together notice what happened at the scene tab here this is all disappeared and is now called cylinder dot zero zero seven the bond cylinder yes anyway so double click this and give it a sensible name so in our case it's called it's just called grass perhaps and that gives us one object that we can replicate along a ground floor let's see how that works if we go back to layer number one then we go back to our logo here which is kind of cool this is funky um, now we select our ground plane 
and uh, with this selected we can head over to this little sparkly icon over here and that is the particle emitter pane tab whatever you want to call it I don't actually know what blender calls these things but if you click that then you can see that we currently haven't got anything in here and that's fine let's just create the click the new button which will add a particle emitter to the currently selected object so had I done that to anything else the particle emitter system would be added to that object so we've added it to our grid which you know grid is actually a really rubbish name let's just name it something else for example ground there the particle system itself can also be renamed in just in case you have more than one particle system attached to a single object but we don't really need to do that yet so I'm just going to leave that in place and we can see lots and lots of options here tell you what I'm going to close every disclosure triangle here so that we you know don't get overwhelmed by all the settings this thing is much less complicated than it looks currently it's just that you can do so many things with it but we won't do them so um, just just close them all down it gives our tired minds a bit of a rest under type I have a couple of options here emitter and hair what we want to do is use the hair emitter setting on our particle system and that will then allow us to replicate an object along another object so right now we see lots of hair that's you know, scary but you know don't worry about it there's also an advanced tab and I encourage you to press it to bring up even more options when you do that then uh, just above the render options here we have velocity rotation and physics so those are more even more options so uh, again let's close everything down and let's go through this one by one it really is less dramatic than it looks so the first thing we want to do is we don't really want to emit hair we want to emit an object or we want to replicate an object namely our grass object and to do that we head over to our render option open that this close this this uh, disclosure triangle and find this menu here where it says non path object and group you've guessed it we want to replicate an object so let's click that our scene will change accordingly and under dupli object we can now select our object that we want to replicate so in our case that's the bushel of grass so let's do that hit grass and there it is you can kind of see it it's not exactly what we had expected because the grass isn't growing upwards the grass is kind of lying flat down as if somebody with a massive car with a one of those big steel wheel things have been come along and this is not what we want but it's not a problem we can work on that there's also size and random size options here let's, let's keep these in mind while we have a look at how we can put our grass upright and that actually happens under the rotation tab here this is why we've switched on the advanced options because under rotation we can now see here the initial rotation velocity slash hair we can align our object along one of those axes of our scene now weirdly enough you'd think the z-axis is up I don't even know why my grass is rotated 90 degrees however if I click the global z-axis or the object z-axis watch what happens it just goes lies flat down the other way it's not what I want either so I can't explain it it's just one of those things you can simply pick any of the other axes so for example global Y and that makes a grass stand upright again I have no idea why but that's how it works and you know I'm fine with that that's cool you can also add a bit of a random element of rotation here Look, watch what happens when I zoom into the grass and I crank up the, the random uh, level of rotation here then my grass all my grass bushels the replicated grass bushels they turn into different directions randomly so don't overdo it because otherwise the li grass lies flat again but for our grass most of it should be upright but I don't want everything to be upright in the same position so I'm going to add a little bit of randomness here that's cool you can also there's also the phase option and the random phase option so if you do that then they will all go into different directions and there's also a, a element of randomization that you can add there so again I think I'm going to set that to zero the initial value because the randomized standing upness is kind of what I want here so that's that this is our grass so far now remember when I said that under the render tab we also have the random kind of size option that we can introduce and that again adds this little bit of imperfection to all the grass stalks so you can 
just uh, crank that up a little bit and see what happens. Some of the grass stalks are now being replicated at a different size, and that's very cool as well. There's also the overall size here. This, uh, careful with the, with the levels here, because the grass tends to grow really large really quickly, and that's also not really what we want. So the initial value here is 0 0.05, and I think I'm gonna leave it at that for now. But I will play with the random size and just make some of these guys a little bit smaller. You know, like this. There. So there's a few other things that I've noticed here. One thing is that perhaps my grass isn't as densely populated on the plane as I would like it for now. But we can take care of that in a moment. We can just replicate more objects and then all these kind of empty patches, they're going to be replicated as well. Another, if I zoom in closely, perhaps from the side even, is that, whoops, I shouldn't have done that, should I? Whoa, what happened there? There. there. Um, another thing I can see is that some of my grass stalks appear to be hovering above the ground. And that's, that's a, that's a no-no, isn't it? That's not what I want either. Even though in a densely populated area we may not see it, I would prefer it if all my grass stalks would be a little bit underneath the ground, as most of them we can see are, but not all of them. So what's going on there? How, how can we change that? Well, this is governed by the origin point of our grass stalk. So I guess with the rotation, sometimes things just get rotated out of the ground. So what we really need to do is set the origin point of the object we want to duplicate and just set that a little bit higher so that it's it's not the, the exact bottom. That was good for modeling, but now for replication, that origin should be a little bit higher. Let's head back to our layer two where our grass resides. And this is where it is. And we can see now that from the side here, we can see, whoops, whoops Jesus, but there. From the side, we can see that the, that the grass emanates directly from the ground plane. And that's not really what we want. Well, let's select the grass, actually. There we go, and um, look again. And we can see that our origin point is directly at the bottom. So to set that higher, all we need to do is maybe, and to center that a little bit, let's uh, move that grass over here and just move it down below where my 3D cursor is currently. So maybe like this. And uh, now, I'm going to go and select that pivot point and put it to where the 3D cursor is, like we did before. This is with the set origin option. Just head over and say origin to 3D cursor. And this will cause the pivot point to go up a little bit. And for that reason, the grass is replicated from the origin point in the particle emitter system. And that means that now our grass stalks should be somewhere further firmly inserted into the ground, which we can't quite see. There, there we go, there we go. So now all these little grass stalks come, come, you know, emanate underneath the plane and then kind of sprout out. And no matter how they're rotated, like you can see here, no matter how they're rotated, none of them protrude above the surface except for this guy. Oh, actually, he's just cut off with the camera, so that's him. False alarm there, everything's cool. There, so that's one problem solved. The other problem is the dense population thing. I'd like more grass, of course, so let's see how we can do that. So um, with the plane selected, you can either select that from the scene or you can just select the ground from our scene tab here. We can head over to the emission option and there we have the number of objects that are now currently replicated on our plane. It's 1,000, that's the default, but we can make that higher and just slide and see what happens. There we go, more grass as we move the slider. Careful with putting too much on there, especially if you have very detailed objects that can make your computer crash very easily. Um, that is just one of those things that you've got to try it out, at which point your computer may or may not become unresponsive. It's kind of a, a tricky thing. So this, from here, it kind of looks like this could be a good grass simulation for now. Let's see what this looks like through the camera and also through the rendered viewport. I guess to get a really accurate representation, we should slap a bit of color on there because this is not an accurate um, grass color for now. I also don't really like the way my scene is showing up. I like to uh, have the camera tilted from the side a little bit, perhaps move it down a bit to give this more drama. So with lock camera to view selected, I can just do that. Perhaps I'm going to not do that in the rendered viewport because I'm replicating so many objects now that it's uh, it's just not very, it's just not great. 
So if I see a little bit of empty frame here, that's no problem. I can just shift the plane further over that way and then that'll that'll get rid of it. I'm just looking for a good placement for the logo. I guess this could be it. So with my plane now selected, with the ground selected, I can just go and say G, Shift, Z, and then just move the whole plane out of view. I can even make it a bit bigger, you know, S, uh, scale that up a bit and then I can go G shift Z and then just move it so that the that there's a lot of grass in next to it I also need the YouTube thumbnail of course so that in that case I need to extend that to the right hand side there a little bit but this is going to work okay for now um, and this is going to be a number here and then my branding is going to be here that's kind of how I envision that so okay that's that let's just have another look at the rendered version of that we may need a little bit more grass over here that's also that could also be helped by making the plane smaller because the way this replication process works is that it replicates x amount of objects along the whole plane and if the plane is large then of course it'll look more patchy than if it was small so it's one of those things that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed it. In the next video, we're going to have a look at how to slap some colors on these objects and to teach how to teach the replicator where not to put replicated objects. Join me then. Bye-bye.